This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. And they're just about all reappointments except for uh, the tree warden. Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Frieda, North Haven's first selectman, and welcome to our December Board of Selectmen meeting. I'm joined, as always, by our second selectman, Mr. William Piper, and our third select woman, Miss Sally Buemi. Thank you, William and Sally, for being here. I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Item number two, any public comments to tonight's agenda? Item number three, approval of the minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting on November 7th. I'll move the approval of those minutes. I'll second. All right, motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item number four, Approval of the minutes of the special board of selectmen meeting on November 19th. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. A second. All right, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me. Number five, the appointment of Sally Buemi, Five Blossom Drive here in North Haven, as a secretary of our board of selectmen. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion, second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Do I have to abstain to my own approval? You should abstain, yes. I'll abstain, but i um, grateful for this fine recognition. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, item number six, ladies and gentlemen, um, the only thing I'd like to discuss tonight is this is a December meeting after a municipal election, so this is strictly an administrative meeting. You'll see on this agenda, or you'll hear tonight, the boards and commission members that are being reappointed. And I'm gonna be turning this over tonight to Sally and Bill to handle most of this meeting from here on in. So we're going to move from number six to number seven, appointments and resignations. And I will start with Sally to kick this off. Sure, thank you. I will um, move for the appointment of Michael Maturo. 111 North Hill Road, North Haven, as the tree warden for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that uh, appointment. I'll All second right. that motion for the appointment of Michael Matura. So we have a motion and a second. Michael has replaced Victor Palma as the head of our streets and roads. A wonderful man, so I endorse this also. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, uh, next on the um, agenda is a re is a motion to uh, I'll make a motion to reappoint Michael J. Frieda, nine, uh, 90 Highland Park Road to the Volunteer Fire Department Benevolent Association Board of Governors for a two-year term to expire on December 1, 2021. Well, there's no resume in the packet, but I'll second it. Yeah, I'm not sure about this guy, so I'm going to abstain. Okay, <laughs> okay. so. So all in favor, aye. aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Lori Jean Hannon, 26 Highland Park Road, to the Volunteer Fire Department Benevolent Association Board of Governors for a two-year term to expire on December 1st, 2021. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, I'd like to thank Lori Jean also uh, for her role on this, and I'll endorse that also. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is a, um, I'll make a motion to uh, reappoint Carl Manns, 8 Belvedere Road to the Volunteer Fire Department Benevolent, Benevolent Association Board of Governors for a two-year term to expire on December 1, 2021. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Carl, thank you for your service on this board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Maurice Varney, 77 Elm Street, to the Volunteer Fire Department Benevolent Association Board of Governors for a two-year term to expire on December 1st, 2021. I'll second that motion. 
All right. We have a motion and a second. Maurice, thank you very much. We call him Reese. Reese, thank you for your service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, uh, next one is a motion. Um, I'll make a motion uh, to appoint Angel San Giorgio, 55 Thompson Street, 14F, uh, East Haven, Connecticut, uh, to the Volunteer Fire Department Benevolent Association Board of Governors for a two-year two term to expire on December 1, 2021. I will second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Angel, thank you very much for your service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, perhaps you might, since the folks at home heard East Haven, you might maybe want to explain why, because usually our boards and commissions are uh, and, uh, North Haven residents. Right. So I, I, that might. All right. So um, Angel, of course, is uh, one of our volunteer firefighters. Right. But so. on this particular board, on this Benevolent Firefighters Association for the Volunteers, uh, the there is no um, residency requirement. And uh, he served on this board for several years. So um, we're fine with that. Yes. I, I just yeah. thought people might hear, wait, did they say it wrong? Good point. So, okay. Uh, yes. I fully support this as well. Yes. Right. Uh, as Val just mentioned, there's another part to this. These are the captains of the volunteers, so the captains right. have the ability to sit. Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay, so we voted on that? Yes. Yes. Um, I will make a motion for the reappointment of David Carney, 56 Hayward Road, Hamden, Connecticut, as animal control officer for a one-year term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Um, I'll second that motion. All right, motion and a second. David does an outstanding job. One of our town employees as an ACO heads up the shelter. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And along the same lines, I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Crystal Rashba, 76 Clif uh, Clifton Street, Wallingford, Connecticut, as assistant animal control officer for a one-year term to expire on December 31st, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Crystal works with David. They make a great team. They do an outstanding job for us. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Robert Bykowski, 99 Spring Road, as the land records auditor for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that uh, motion. Bob, thank you for your service on this. We appreciate it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, next on the uh, list is um, I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Jeremy J. Bukowski uh, of 175 Clintonville Road uh, as the land records auditor for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second. <coughs> All right. We, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Jeremy for his service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Alan F. Fontana, 6 Crestview Drive, to the Commission on Aging for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Mr. Alan Fontana for his service. I work with him on this commission. I thank him. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is the um, motion to reappoint Sandra Mastroianni, 183 Sentinel Hill Road to the Commission for a Commission on Aging for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Sandra for her service on this very important commission. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Joseph P. Villano, 43 Highland Park Road, to the Commission on Aging for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Joe for his continued service on this commission. Thank you very much, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'll make a motion to reappoint Heidi A. Betcher, uh, 45 Beach Street to the Blight Prevention Appeals Board for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. Like, I'd like to thank Heidi for stepping forward. I think it was a year, year and a half ago to want to be part of this board. Thank you, Heidi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Stephen M. Miller, 5 Round Hill Road, to the Blight Prevention Appeals Board for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that motion. 
We have a motion and a second. Stephen, thank you for your service on this board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'll motion to reappoint Lynn Fredrickson, 95 Pool Road, to the Blight Prevention Appeals Board for a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Lynn for her service. She happens to be the chairman or chairwoman of this commission and board. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Carl C. V. 30 Allendale Drive to the Building Board of Appeals for a five-year term to expire on December 31st, 2024. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Carl, thank you very much for your service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next is um, a motion to uh, reappoint Carmen J. Petalino, 600 Washington Avenue, number C4, as an alternate to the Building Board of Appeals for a five-year term to expire on December 31st, 2024. A second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank this longstanding resident, Carmen, for his service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will make a motion for the reappointment of Michael J. Frieda, 90 Harlem Park Road, to the Cemetery Commission for a two-year term to expire on December 1st, 2021. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Aye. Okay. Um, next is a motion to reappoint uh, the Reverend Wayne Lavender, 75 Clintonville Road, to the Community Services Commission for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Reverend Wayne. Um, I've worked closely with him on several projects. Thank you for your service here, Wayne. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Kimberly A. Rossi, 15 Edison Drive, to the Community Services Commission for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Kim because she also came to me about a year, year and a half ago looking to get involved. So thank you for your willing to serve. Kim, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next is um, a motion to reappoint Michelle L. Spader, 15 uh, Leeton, uh, Leeton Court to the Community Services Commission for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. A second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Michelle. She's been on this commission for quite some time. Has done an outstanding job. Thank you, Michelle, for being willing, still being willing to serve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will make a motion for the reappointment of Frank Mayer, 25 Warner Road, to the Economic Development Commission for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Frank, you've been on this commission a long time. Thank you for your service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is a motion to reappoint Robert Zambrano, 130 State Street, Unit G12, to the Economic Development Commission for a three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second, and Robert's here tonight. Bob, thank you very much for your service on this commission. We appreciate working with you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I am happy to make a motion to reappoint Mark Genovese, 1322 Ridge Road, for a two-year term as the Department of Motor Vehicles Hearing Officer to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second, and Mark, thank you. You stepped forward on this a few years ago. We really appreciate your service, and thank you for your service to the North Haven Police Department as one of our retired captains. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I'll motion to uh, reappoint Ann Garston, 22, uh, 225 Millbrook Road, to the Inlet Wetlands Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Ann for her service. She came forward a couple of years back. Thank you for your service on this commission. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Cheryl Ann Junowitz, 101 Nolan Road, to the Inland Wetlands Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to thank Cheryl also. She goes back a long way in, with the town. Thank you for your service, Cheryl. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next is a, a motion to uh, reappoint. Well, I'll make a motion to reappoint. 
John R. Whitcomb, uh, 2 North Hill Road to the Inland Wetlands Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Second. I'd like to, in discussion, say that John, I think, is being appointed, Val. He's not being reappointed, or is he? No. Yes. He was appointed last month that's right. as a to fill the vacancy. vacancy, but that term expires so now. He's been Excellent. Okay. okay. So I'd like to say John has come to us with a tremendous background in, uh, in what he's done engineering-wise and uh, construction. John, thank you for stepping forward. Looking forward to having you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Stephen M. Miller, 5 Round Hill Road, to the Inland Wetlands Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Stephen, thank you again for your service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is a motion for the reappointment. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of James LaRusso, Jr., 93 Arrow, uh, Arrowdale Road, as an alternate on, alternate on the Inland Wetlands Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, thank you very much, James, for your willingness to serve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Mary Ann Hardy, 37 Brockett Farm Road, to the Library Board of Directors for a six-year term to expire on December 31st, 2025. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Marianne, thank you for your service. You've been on for a few years. We appreciate your service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll motion for the reappointment of Aaron S. McDonald, 3 State Street, to the Library Board of Directors for a six year term to expire on December 31st, 2025. Second. We have a motion and a second. Aaron, thank you very much for your service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Ralph H. Black, Jr., 257 Clintonville Lane, to the Library Board of Directors for a six-year term to expire on December 31st, 2025. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ralph, thank you very much for your service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds like a long way away. Yes, <laughs> it does. Um, the... Um, uh, next on the list is um, a motion. I'll make a motion to reappoint Robert Kolaluski, uh, 5 Wilson Avenue, to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a four year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Bob's been involved for a long time in terms of Park and Rec with his contributions to the town for many years. So, Bob, thank you very much for serving. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Christopher J. Pagan, 14 Pleasant Drive, to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Chris, thank you for serving this past term. We appreciate it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'll motion to reappoint Mary Lou Stamp, uh, 292 Upper State Street to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a four-year term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. And Mary Lou, I'd like to thank you for your service. You've been an outstanding chairwoman. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of James Gioletti, 11 Falcon Crest Drive, to the Regional Planning Agency of South Central Connecticut for a two-year term to expire December 31st, 2021. I'll uh, second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to personally thank Jim here also because I spoke with him years ago about his willingness to sit on this RPA. He, he said he would. Thank you for your service, Jim, and we're delighted to reappoint you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, a motion to reappoint Leonard Thomas, 7 Upper State Street, to the Water Pollution Control Authority for a four-year term to expire December 31st, 2024. A second. We have a motion and a second. Leonard, thank you very much. Years ago, Leonard approached me, wanted to get involved with the town. Thank you for your service on this WPCA board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will make a motion for the reappointment of Dale Sheridan, 94 Garfield Avenue, to the Water Pollution Control Authority for a four-year term to expire December 31st, 2024. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion and a second. And Dale, can I sit next to you on this 
Commission, this WPCA, thank you for your service. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A motion to reappoint Michael J. Frieda, 90 Highland Park Road, to the Water Pollution Control Authority for a two year term to expire on December 1st, 2024. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. I'll make a motion for the reappointment of Edward Swinkowski, 23 Tammy Hill Road, Wallingford, as the Welfare Administrator for a two year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ed, thank you for your willingness to serve as the Welfare Administrator. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I'll motion to reappoint Brian Havens, North Haven Funeral Home Director, as sub-registrar of vital records for the Town of North Haven, as recommended by J. Stacy Yarborough, Town Clerk Registrar of Vital Records for the Town of North Haven, effective December 2nd, 2019, uh, terminating on December 5th, uh, 2021. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Brian, thank you very much for your service and for all you do for our community. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will make a motion for the reappointment of John Ayakabuchi, Washington Memorial Funeral Home Director as Sub-Registrar of Vital Records for the Town of North Haven, as recommended by J. Stacey Arborough, Town Clerk, Registrar of Vital Records for the Town of North Haven, effective December 2nd, 2019, terminating on December 5th, 2021. I'll second that. Okay, a motion and a second. John, thank you very much for your willingness to serve and continue to serve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We made it through. Made it through. So I will make uh, a motion per item eight on the agenda to approve the property tax refunds listed on the agenda. Okay. I'll second Sally's motion. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this every two years, this Board of Selectmen meeting is an administrative meeting for the appointments of boards and commissions and the reappointments. So with that being said, that almost concludes our business this evening. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is Thursday, January 2nd, 2020, here at 7 p.m. at Town Hall. A couple of public service announcements I'd like to make. Um, first of all, Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy Hanukkah and a very happy and healthy new year. It seems hard to believe that another year has gone by. I wanted to let everyone know that this Sunday at 4.30, we will be moving over to the North Haven Green to light the Christmas tree. We have a young lady in her family who will be lighting the tree this year. Her name is Brooke Royka. She's been diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. So I've asked her and invited her to come up with her two little children and her parents and cousins to light the Christmas tree this year on the North Haven Green. And then Sunday night, December 22nd, Val, can you check that December 22nd that that's the Sunday night. We'll be lighting the menorah on the green. Sherman Katz and I, I'm grateful for his efforts. Sherman is helping me spearhead this. And it is December 22nd. We will be at the entrance of the North Haven Green, Sherman and I, um, a rabbi from a neighbor congregation uh, in, in Hamden, and we hope to have a lot of participation there. Sunday evening or late afternoon, December 22nd, lighting the menorah on the North Haven Green. We anticipate a gathering starting at 4.30 with the lighting to begin somewhere between 4.45 and 5 p.m. So thank you. We hope you'll join us for that. Yeah, that that's how yep. Yes. I would just like to uh, echo the first selectman sentiments. Uh, I look forward to both lighting ceremonies and wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah. Um, I'm sure I'll see people at Stop and Shop. I'll probably be there 10 times the you're next doing, three weeks. Are you doing your Holy Trinity this year? <laughs> oh, no, 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 this is fish, oh, fish. fish. So that's right, fish. I'll be in aisle seven, that's mm -hmm. ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to share with the audience what the Holy Trinity is. Well, those, those are my, well, we, I don't make them on um, Christmas Eve. The Holy Trinity is, uh, <laughs> you want me to tell, well, God, I please, specialize no. in, well, you've had the eggplant this. parm and sausage and peppers mm -hmm. and uh, baked ziti, yes. Uh, yeah. But, um, 
Christmas Eve is the traditional the fish. Traditional all the different types of fish so that's how i grew up also right the right traditional so, seafood dinner on christmas eve i'll see everybody in the breadcrumb and tomato paste aisle <laughs> at stomp and chomp for the next few weeks william anything so like what I'll, do you I'll got sec, there I'll second sally's motion yeah. get your christmas shopping done there i'm i'm very nervous about that okay mm -hmm. <laughs> he was complaining shortest, before the, the least, yeah. like we were talking about before this is the least <laughs> amount of time i've ever had between uh thanksgiving and christmas so Right. Thanksgiving was the latest it could be, so mm -hmm. get going, Bill. I've already Bill. told my family what I wanted, so. Mm. Okay. Uh, great food. So we all wish you a happy holiday season. A wonderful Very good. time of year. And yes. we're delighted to be serving you. <laughs> this board is left into our, uh, serving our fine citizens here in town. So with that being said, we're on item number 10. Any public comment? Mary White. Mary White, Summer Lane. I don't know if this was said um, earlier in the meeting, we're a little late, but I wanted to say congratulations to Mike on being named president of the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Oh, thank you. Thank very, you. Very nice. Thank you. Very happy to have you um, as president. That's great. Um, I wanted to bring up our First Amendment right of free speech. I was recently bothered, troubled, when I listened to the Board of Finance discussion during the November meeting. At first, the chair wanted to eliminate public comment altogether, stating public comment often goes longer than their actual meeting. As discussion continued, he suggested three minutes and no questions for public comment. Ultimately, the board voted five minutes with a second time at the microphone for three minutes and no questions. Public comment is, in my opinion, the people's opportunity to exercise free speech. I speak at other meetings during public comment. I have never been told I am not allowed to ask questions. This rule voted on by the Board of Finance limits our right to free speech. Not being able to ask the Board of Finance a question when this board deals with taxpayers' money and how it is allocated, it is a rule of which I strongly object. And I don't know what I can do about that at this point. Do you have any suggestions? Well, there's really nothing that could be done right now, but I want to just share with you what the larger picture is here. So Mr. Monaco was not trying to eliminate public comment. He was trying to do what many towns do and what the state does, it is put a time limit on comment. It was his feeling that there was discussion that was beyond the purview of the Board of Finance. So this meeting, is a meeting that I said right from day one when I first took office, I'll stay here all night answering questions. So when it comes to things that aren't in the purview of the Board of Finance, you can ask them here because I'm involved with every aspect of this government and there'll be no restriction on this because this is the meeting that even though, Mary, many towns have a three minute or five minute limit at the Board of Selectmen meeting, many cities and towns just say it's a public comment to agenda. With me here, I've said it right from day one, and you've seen it down through the years. I'll answer any single question regarding what's happening in the town. So we do it more, better in many respects. Right. When we look at the whole composition of boards and commissions here, there are, I think, Orange, Connecticut doesn't even allow public comment in Board of Finances. So I think it was designed to just stay focused on Board of Finance issues, and I think that it was designed to... Um, just make the comments, you can ask the questions, but many of the questions, they don't know the answers because they're not involved. Mm -hmm. I'm involved. That's why this will always be an open meeting. Okay, well, I definitely appreciate that. But for example, if I went to a Board of Finance meeting and I stepped up to the microphone during public comment, I'm mm -hmm. under the impression that my right to free speech is limited in that the chairman specifically said no questions. So like, I have a question that I would ask if I went to the Board of Finance meeting and it is related to what they do and I fear if I go to the microphone and I ask that question, he's gonna shut me down and say, that's a question, don't we don't so. take questions. Yeah, I don't think that'll happen. I think it's more the the, the the five minute time limit and then coming back with another five minutes if, if you would like. So, so you think that if I came to the microphone during at during public comment and I wanted to ask a question, yeah, like, think like you, for example, if I wanted to ask what is the fund balance, he's not no, gonna say we're not taking no, questions. No, he wouldn't say that. No. He wouldn't say that. No. Okay. So but if there's a question about 
uh, an issue at the high school track, then that's what they're saying. They're, they don't know right. the answers to that. Right, beyond the purview right. of the board. So I okay. think if you stick to the I agenda that. or stick to, you know, if let's say something comes up, Mary, where it says the one line is overexpended by $10,000 and, you, and you're sitting there and you didn't get the explanation, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you could certainly ask, can, was there a reason why that line is overexpended at this point? Okay. So I think the whole intention is to stay focus from moving from a wide latitude of questions, mm -hmm. some of which have nothing to do with those elected officials, and just stick with the financial issues that they're talking about. Any other issues, you can bring them up at this meeting. All right, sounds okay. good. Thank you. All right. And Merry Christmas, Happy Merry New Year, Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Right. Okay. Well, I, um, I agree with uh, Mary's uh, point. Uh, I would urge her to bring her position to the Board of Finance. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I think almost anything is under the purview of the Board of Finance because the town government provides services and all those services require money. So anything about anything that the town does um, is an issue, in my opinion, before the Board of Finance because everything that the town does is, is related to the budget and is um, uh, so, you know, to say that there's certain things not in the purview, um, I think that's a bit of a stretch. And your example about asking about the track, uh, sometimes people can't make, for example, the middle school meetings, which are um, the middle school building committee, which are very rare now because it's almost done, but they can make the board of finance meetings. They're at night and there is a board of finance member who is a member of the middle school building committee. So in that particular example, if someone had a question, Perhaps the middle school, um, the the board of finance representative um, on the middle school building committee could address that, it. That's so, that's true. so uh, that's you know, uh, but uh, so we'll see how it we'll how, how, it, how it goes. But I, but I, I appreciate uh, your comments, Ms. White. So we understand this though that the the operational aspect of this government is myself and Ed Swinkowski. We're the people that operate the government every day. The board of finance oversees the budget. You, they ask questions about line expenditures. We'll give them updates on terms of, uh, as an example, with, uh, which I did a few months ago. Uh, Ed and I, we refinance bonds. We saved the town $568,000. So those are the things that we do. So when it comes to certain operational issues, um, you know, they, they're not going to know those because they're not involved with those. We're going to know those. So and that's why you can ask anything at this meeting. But you and Ed are at the Board of Finance meetings, too. So. We are. So, but, but you got a guy here that's involved with every aspect of this government. Come to this meeting and ask those questions that are, the Board of Finance may not know the answers to. Every aspect of this government. And if there's a question that I don't have an answer for, I'll say to you, well, Mary, you know, or Tom, I'll get back to you. But generally, you don't see me hesitate on some of the answers. I pretty much have a pretty good feel for what's going on here. But so, and, I, and I think, you know, um, you know, sometimes like, you uh, know, I think when we were talking about police, Mary, about police and fire, too, and I know on many occasions you brought up statistics, you know, so which I think is really good. But maybe maybe, you know, I think ever, maybe you over overemphasize the point, you know, where because you have a lot of good points. I know a lot of a lot of times like, you know, that you've brought up. So I think they're just trying to keep it more succinct because I always worry about. You know whether after the you know people watch so many people watch this on TV now that that after a while they they get tired and switch over to the NBA or the major league you know Red Sox or Yankees or whatever just because so I think it, uh, sometimes brevity is better than than not at least because you know you've made a good point and then you know uh, you know and make your make your best points but kind of keep it more succinct for. Mm -hmm. For exactly that reason, and I know from having been on the board of finance, I know the other thing, and it hasn't happened recently, is is that sometimes we've had people, quite a few people in the audience, and even here, at the, you know, here, and if somebody is too long or holds the mic too long, it may discourage somebody else from speaking because it gets late. So, so there's some there's some good arguments I think for brevity. And keep this in mind too, Mary. Well, you, you know, down through the years, if you look at the board of finance meetings, they they're the ones asking the questions. They asked the questions. They asked the question about um, a, uh, a piece of equipment. And then you heard me jump in last time by saying, was a flail mower, mower? So between Ed and I, we're gonna have all the answers. So their primary role is to ask questions. 
and look at the numbers and ask us why is that underspent? Why is that overspent? What's happening here or there? That's what Board of Finances do. But I think that they felt that, you know, in the last two or three years, there were questions that they were being asked that, you know, they're not involved with some of those issues. But let's see how it goes. I think it's a work in progress with the five minutes and the five minutes. We'll see how it goes. Five, five and three. Okay. Is it five and three? Those five. I don't think they're going to take a time on nothing. I think. So. I think he said he, he wanted to go five for the second. Yeah, I thought it was five and five. At the last second before the vote, you. I said five. You five, right. uh, kind of leaned and said five, so I do think it went five and five. Yeah, and Mr. Monaco agreed to that, so. He's a very reasonable chairman. Better than the original mean, three minutes. So. He's a, you know, he's a very, very reasonable guy. So, all right, then, very we'll good. We'll see how it works. You know, I, uh, I reviewed the Board of Finance minutes for the last six years trying to, because at the bottom of the minutes it says public comment. It doesn't say who spoke or what they spoke about, but it says there was public comment for a blank number of minutes. Um, and um, so I was paying attention to that because the, um, as Ms. White pointed out, the chairman had said that sometimes public comment was longer than the meeting. And the longest uh, public comment I saw was 60 minutes and the uh, meeting was well over two hours. So I take exception to that conclusion that the, it was longer, public comment has been longer than the meeting proper. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Okay, very good. All right, any other comments? Yes, Bill. Uh, Bill Richards, North Avenue. Uh, I have a question on the um, reevaluation that's in process going on right now. And I'm wondering why we switched from the prior company we had five years ago to this current co company now that's doing it. Uh, the reason, Bill, is we're, we're obligated to go out to competitive bid by right. charter. And uh, when bids come in lower uh, for companies that perform the same service and both companies are uh, doing business with every city and town in the state of Connecticut, uh, that's why. So the, the bid was lower. Okay. The other thing is... Um, I called today to make an appointment to come in for my properties and have them review them with me on the taxes and the assessment, what your assessment is. And doing a study on, from the five year ago plan that they went through on to the current one, I'm seeing major discrepancies on where places went sky high on their increases in neighboring places dropped a substantial amount of money on the assessment. So I'm just wondering whether there's any type of problem going on throughout the town where they only have a few appointments left to sit down with them. And I'm just wondering if there's any kind of issue going on because it just doesn't look justified from five years on the increase on some of these and the decrease is unbelievable. So, you know, with 10,000 homes, there's going to be, it's going to be different for everyone. This is why the town doesn't do this. We don't, we have, don't nearly have the resources. This is why these two companies that Bill's asking about do this. They're the professionals. Every five years, every city and town is mandated by the state of Connecticut to hire one of these two companies to go around. They'll go out and either visit the house, walk around the house, or sometimes people let them in the house. Now, they do a five-year look back. In other words, the last reval was 2014. Right. So they will compare the 2014 house with the 2019 house. And some of the factors that they utilize are comp sales in the area, comp com comparable sales, if there was an addition on the house or a new roof on the house, or if there was uh, a... Uh, a central a central air upgrade they look at every aspect of the house and say what's different in 2019 than 2014 and then they base their valuation now while bill's here it's not something that the town currently is involved with because it's the outside company that does this 
So there's a mechanism. Bill just referenced it. There's a letter, there's a number on the bottom of that letter that says this is not a bill. You can make an appointment to present your case like Bill's talking about here and ask the questions and say in 2014 this was the valuation, this is what you're saying in 2019, and in Bill's case, perhaps he'll prove that nothing, no enhancements were done. Now, beyond that, then there's another set of elected officials, the Board of Assessment Appeals. You can make an appointment in March to present your case to them with all the facts. That's the way the system works in every city and town in Connecticut. Well, what, the reason I'm really bringing this up tonight because I, I have a property in my area where there was no changes and they assessed them at over thirty thousand dollars less and not not far from my house where there's been no changes on it so and also on your um the information they have printed on what you have on your house the different items and so on i i see mistakes in those well that's then there's a good example as to why these two f forums are set up to present those discrepancies that bill's talking about that's why the company themselves are entertaining appointments, and you've made one apparently. I, no? Yes, I made for and then I, the property you, side. Then after, after the first of the year, you know, you probably should consider making another one in March if this one doesn't work to your liking. Okay, and um, with that, with their, our mill rate and everything, I was kind of confused on the letter that they sent out to us on that. It's now, the taxes are due what, December 31st for this year? Right. Now, is that on the mill rate from this past year, or the, I know we didn't have an increase this right. year, or does so, it stay the same? So the mill rate stays the same. Stays the same. Stays the same, right. The mill rate is, will stay the same, yeah, as it will next year, too. I, giving you a preview of what I hope I'm so. going to present. I hope so. There's not yeah, going to be I, a mill rate increase next year, either, so. Yeah, I was just surprised to see that many discrepancies in right. the up and downs and where there's no changes in your neighborhood. That's, you got to present it, Bill, so. Okay. That, that's why you're. All right, so I hope everybody does look at theirs because, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't forget about it because, you know, the town has run very well. I mean, our tax base is fantastic. You always hear about people in other towns, oh, I like to live in North Haven all the time. And, you know, move to North Haven, you know? So, but it's, a, it's well run. It's well run. Thank okay, you. that's all. Thank Next you. Point. Okay. Well, can, if I could just comment, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you, you had questioned about the, 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 the letter being a little confusing. You have to remember to make the distinction. Um, it, it mentioned the grand list year. So, right. you know, the, the assessor sort of freezes everyone's valuation. The October grant 1st. list is October 1st. Right. So the most recent one was October 1st of 2019, but the taxes on that list won't be until Ju the July of, of 2020 oh, and then um, January of 2021. Right. So everybody gets a little confused because they, uh, the the grand list is always a year earlier than the, the taxes. So right. that could be part of your confusion. And I just wanted to say, you had mentioned March, to read those letters uh, carefully because yes. I think the deadline to get the hearing between the, 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 the Assessment Board of Appeals is February 20th, I want to say. It's in that point. So that's Yeah, point, so, so when you had said March, well, the, meetings uh, the, the meetings are in March, so right. I wanted to make okay, the distinction. So have... Yeah, so I just urge everybody, if, if everyone if like you has concerns, read that letter carefully because the deadlines are spelled out in there. The, the, the meetings very well may be in March, as the first selectman accurately stated, but don't think you have till then to arrange it. So read the letter. I believe the deadline yeah. is in February to arrange that hearing. Yes, and if, if if you don't have the letter, Bill, hypothetically, then just call the assessor's office. They'll yeah. give you, they'll give you the, the, the time frame on that, Great. okay? All okay, right. Very thank good. you. Thank Read you, your Bill. mail. Thank you. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's it. All right, motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. All those Second. in favor? Second. All those in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. Okay, thanks. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven.
Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.